In today's video, I have prepared something very unique for the first time and I haven't had it seen it and I haven't seen it on YouTube before. A lot of my members, I will get to that point, have asked me to teach how to read a 2D technical drawing and how to convert that 2D drawing into a 3D component. So in this video, this is what I'm going to teach you and this is what you're going to understand. Stay tuned, watch the video to the end. There is a very special topic in front of you and I haven't seen anybody else cover it. So stay tuned. Instead of working on a piece of paper, I decided to show you the concept of reading a 2D drawing and converting it into a 3D model on my iPad on Shaper 3D. There are a couple of pros to this because I can quickly rotate and change the angle. I can color code everything right now and on a piece of paper or even on SolidWorks, it would, it would take longer because I have to switch back uh, between drawing mode and the 3D component mode, but here, I find it easier. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail on how the Shaper 3D works in this video. If you want me, I can make a different video on that. But for the purposes of this video, I am only going to use it to teach you how to read a 2D drawing, okay? Now let's get started. I have created a component here and we are looking at it from the top. So this is the top angle. And when we wanna read a 2D drawing, we need a minimum of two different angles, two different perspectives, whether it's front and right, whether it's top or front, whether it's top or right, or in some worst case scenarios, we need all the top, front and right angle if the component is complicated enough. Sometimes two would do, sometimes you need three, okay? Now, the whole objective of this video is to learn how to convert what you are seeing based on two different angles into a 3D component in your head. Now let's get started. This is the top angle. It means if you were looking at the component from a drone, this is, imagine this is a drone shot. This is what you would see. You would see a circle in the middle. I have color coded it in yellow. We have a dark orange section and we have two light orange sections. And it seems like this circle is interfering all the three sections, the dark orange and the two yellow uh, or light orange sections. So what can we understand from this angle only without moving to the other angles? First, by looking at this circle, because this is a perfect circle, it is either an extruded volume outward, like an antenna on top of this component, or it's a cavity that actually uh, engraves into the component. That we cannot understand from one angle only, okay? But we know there is a circular situation somewhere in the middle. We have an edge over here. So it shows this top surface that we are looking at and this one are not actually collinear. There is an angle. There is a breakage between these two surfaces. Also between this dark uh, area and the other two. So we are looking at three different... Um, uh, heights, if you're looking at it as a topography, you have three different heights and a circle, so four all together. Now, there is nothing more we can take from this other than we have two perfect 90 degree angles here and here, and over here we have an inclined side, okay? Now, let's just change the angle to the front view. Okay, so this is our front view. Usually, when you're looking at a 2D drawing, your components uh, are not shaded. They're not color coded. It's basically black and white because your paper is white and you cannot understand whether or not a surface is curved, unlike here. We have shading, so we know this is actually the bedrock for that yellow circle we were looking at from the top angle. If this is the top angle, we were looking at it from here. Okay, now seeing that, I immediately understand that that yellow circle was not an antenna. It was not an extruded volume outside of my component. It's actually engraved into the material. Now, let me just uh, go to appearance and show hidden lines because when you're reading a 2D drawing, you need to see the hidden edges. Hidden edges are the edges that actually fall 
uh, behind the view that you're looking at. So they show up as dashed lines officially. And in Shaper 3D, they just show up as a very thin line like here. So when I see this edge that I just highlighted, I understand this is the r bottom of that yellow circle. So that surface that we saw from the top angle that looked like a yellow circle ends here. So actually it's uh, extrude cutting into the body and stops right here, okay? We have some other hidden edges here that we don't want to jump onto. Let's just take it easy. Now, we saw there were two main sections when we were looking at it from the top angle, and that was this dark orange and this light orange. So now, I am looking at the component from the front angle. Now, we are not looking at it from a drone anymore. We are standing on the ground and looking at the front. So if it was a building, the door would have been somewhere here because this is the front facade of the building. Now, what do we see when we look at it from the front? We notice that the dark orange area we were looking at, it has a higher height. So this is higher, nice. And, and two light orange sections had a breakage in between and this is where they break. So we had one surface that is reaching this level and the other one, while inclined, it's a slope actually, it's not flat, it's here, okay? So we were looking at it from this angle and now we are looking at it from the other. Without jumping on any conclusion, I'm going to notice one last thing to this angle and then we move on to the right angle, okay? Now, you see when you look at it from the front angle, the light orange section is slightly larger. It reaches this level while the orange stops here. This is one more thing we can understand from looking at it from this angle. Now time to uh, change it to the right angle. But before I do, can you guess which side is actually the right angle? If this is the front and from here when you look down is the top angle, which angle is the right angle? You have to imagine you have to be standing on the right side of the building and that's not this one because if this is the front, you have to calculate the right from your perspective when you would be standing inside the building. So technically, this angle is the right angle. When we look at it from the right, we need to see the dark orange section on the left, a little bit higher. Uh, we need to be looking at the light orange section on the right, and we cannot see this gray area that belongs to the yellow circle. We can still see the gray area in form of a quarter. So you have to do the math. Look, this is the slope, the inclined surface on the light orange. This blue area just appeared out of nowhere. Why? Because when you're looking at it from the top angle, from here looking down, this was the higher surface. So this is the dark orange section. This is the light orange section. And since they share a common face in the front, this whole face is highlighted in blue. Now, before making you more confused, I'm going to point out what else can be seen in this angle before I switch it into a 3D view so you understand what's going on. This is the hidden edge for that yellow circle. So that yellow circle is actually an extruded cut all the way to the here. And this is the cavity for it. Nice. Now, if you think you have understood how the 3D component that we are working on in this video looks like, you may pause the video, open your SOLIDWORKS and start uh, creating it. Imagine this edge is five, this height is also five, and these two are cut in half, so two and a half, two and a half, and do it approximate. You don't need all the dimensions. Can you roughly recreate this component be before I reveal the whole image? When I rotate this in a second, you will see that this side that we cannot see from this angle belongs to the dark orange section. Uh, we will see the rest of the gray um, cylindrical surface. Look, exactly like this. So this is it. From the top, we saw this without any perspective on. From the front, 
we saw that. So this is the front. And by rotating it this way, we can switch from front to top. And this was right. This was the right, switching it this way brings us to the top and front again. Now, now that you know how the component looks like, could you tell me how we can recreate this? If you had all the drawings, how would you uh, recreate this component and start from scratch? Because Obviously, when you are given a 2D drawing, you are not given the whole image. You cannot see the isometric, trimetric, or diametric angle on the 3D component, so you're going to have to create it in your head. It's so easy. You could start from either of the three angles. The way I do it is this. I usually uh, would like to start from the front angle and pick front uh, a plane in SOLIDWORKS, but that's something uh, up to you, depending on the situation later on. So if I wanted to recreate this component, I would um, start from here. Let's just draw it exactly on top of the component, what I see. So this line is representing the bottom line. Then I'm going to draw this one. Look, this five by five square is representing the box that would fit the whole component from the front angle, uh, and that's why I drew it. Now, what I would do is to draw something like this, and we have like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, it goes down one, two, my bad, I curved it, one, two, three, four. All right, done, and this is one, too many it has to stop here right we don't have it all the way there but I would use this area this area as well as this area and extrude it all the way for five so we cover the right angle if you look at it from the right the amount of extrusion can be found from the right angle. So we know that the cross section is for now a r r square and from the right angle it extrudes for five. Now when we look at it from the top we realize look at this hidden edge we need something like this so I'm gonna redraw a line leave it there and extrude cut this area this is something we can understand from the top angle something we could not get from the right or front okay let's get rid of this triangle not needed anymore so now instead of doing that I'm gonna take a different approach that would work and that would be looking at my component from the top angle. When I look at it from the top angle, I see how my component is actually cut in half perfectly like this. So I'm gonna cut it in half and start applying this height difference that we notice, which is about this much. I'm looking at this height here, which is approximately this. And all I have to do is to create a chamfer. Obviously you're gonna have to measure the chamfer and uh, apply it with the right amount but I'm just gonna do it r roughly here so that would be the chamfer if this is too much we can reduce it it's not too much to do and I'll leave it like that the last thing is to create the circle we saw that perfect circle and zoom in to select the surfaces and cut it down like this and this is how we made the component we took the outer box which was a five by five square drew it 
extruded it according to the right plane, then we looked at it from the top angle, created the difference in height by cutting the component in half, then extrude cutting it down, created the last chamfer and drew the circle from the top angle again and extrude cutting it down. So basically, this is how I recreated a 3D component out of my 2D angles. So if you have any questions about this technique of teaching, you can reach out to me because this is not about uh, what software you're using, you because this is a 2D drawing and a 3D component. So technically, it applies to every single software CAD package that you are using, whether it's SOLIDWORKS or not, whether it's Shaper 3D or not. The technique is the same. Once you understand it, there is no way you would confuse it again. So I'm going to make a couple of more videos if you like. Let me know what you think. And until you understand it. This was based on many requests that I have received from the, my members on Cyrus Course Pro. And I actually started uploading a series of 2D, how to read 2D drawings for my members. And if you're interested to know who these members are or what Cyrus Course Pro is, uh, make sure to click on the link below, also on the info card on the top right uh, corner of the screen and check it for yourself because there are so many bonuses for you, whether it's a mini course, whether it's a free webinar, you could take advantage of it. Don't forget to just sign up and watch the free webinar and get your free mini course. Over there, there is more detail, but more on this later, I would upload more videos, at least one more, unless uh, all the comments uh, say otherwise. So let me know what you think. Also, if you have any questions on Shaper 3D, uh, I have included uh, the link and some information about the software in the description of this video. I'm in contact with Shaper 3D and if you're interested to get your own license, uh, just wait a bit. Maybe in the next video, I will have some good surprises for you. I'll be in touch and I will see you next week.